Wow, we've got some folks coming in. Well, welcome, welcome, everybody, uh, to our weekly event, our Campus Ready uh, program. Uh, and this, again, we want you to know this session is for you. Uh, we're definitely here to help and connect and to make sure that we get all your questions, thoughts, feelings, concerns that you have in this time of getting our campus ready for not only our students, but for you all uh, to make sure everyone feels welcome, safe in this environment. Uh, we have a, a great lineup of uh, professionals and faculty members and, and administrators here in the room today. And we want to make sure that uh, you have the opportunity to let us know what you all need. So please, 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 in the chat, if you have a question, thought that you would like to share with the panel, please make sure that you all drop it in the chat and I'll be letting it uh, our panelists know uh, and I'll be tracking it for you all. So please, if you want to uh, send us a message, uh, please drop it in the chat and we would definitely be willing to field those questions. We do have some questions that folks submitted previously, uh, but if maybe the, the chat is not something you want to do right now, we do have our Google form that we put out. You can see the email in the DL, uh, and there's actually a link to submit your question via Google form. So if you do feel more comfortable, maybe you want to think about it, process that question, please make sure you drop it in there. And then the next week, we'll be able to address it for you. And if there's something specific, maybe we can reach out to somebody and get your question answered for you. So please y'all make sure that you uh, drop your questions inside the chat. And without further ado, we'll officially get this thing started. And I would like to formally welcome our Vice President of Instruction, Ms. Tilly Chavez to the wonderful uh, Q&A session. And I'll pass it over to her for a greeting and then maybe provide a quick update about an upcoming uh, specific date we wanna tell you all about. Thank you, Luke. Welcome, everyone. And I'm sorry I turned my attention because uh, we had a visitor in the office. Genevieve and I are separate places down the hall from each other, and we heard the door open, and lo and behold, our president walked in to say hello. So I was like, do you want to jump on? He's like, no, I just came down to see you all. But anyways, uh, thank you. I got a little distracted on that one, but uh, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you um, for helping us, Luke, and continuing with this. And I really shout out to you, always keeping us together. And yes, he's got such a beautiful radio voice. It just keeps me intrigued. I'm like, what's he going to say next? But um, I'm so excited to be here again. We're getting closer every week. We've been doing this every Thursday, and we'll continue to do so until you no longer have any questions for us. And um, one of the big things that I really wanted to bring up to everyone's mind is I'm sure as we start to come back to campus and um, different offices are starting to open and see what they need, um, we can work on, on those kind of needs as time goes by as well. But right now, um, I've been meeting with several different department schools. And um, as we look at enrollment, people are seeing a little worried. And I think a lot of that is the fact that the face-to-face -face classes. Um, students do are required to submit some clearance paperwork, whether that would be uh, vaccination or exemption paperwork. We're not sure if our students um, have difficulty submitting or realizing maybe what that even means. How does that work? What do I do? Um, so I think that um, Luke is going to address in just a little while about that piece of it. But one thing I really wanted to bring to everyone's attention is that today is the 29th of July. And so coming up in about a week next Friday is August 6th. And August 6th is the set date for students to be dropped for um, not submitting their clearance paperwork. So whether they have been vaccinated or exemption, if that has not been submitted, students will be dropped from those classes. Then you may turn around and say, but what happens then? What well, goes into the normal way of just any kind of enrollment that we normally do? There's a wait list. Those students would then have the opportunity to come in. But what we're really trying to work at with the district office and all of us in the schools is try to figure out a way that maybe if they get they get dropped, but maybe it's like on a hold for a short period of time. So those students, once they get that notice, they're gonna say, now what do I do? I've had my paperwork all along. I just didn't know how. So we're trying to find a mechanism so that we don't just go in this um, circle as, as Jeannie Tyler will tell me, you drop one, put in somebody else, they drop two, and we just keep doing the same thing over and over. So we're really trying to figure that piece out, but just know that that's gonna, try, that's gonna happen probably next Friday over the weekend. And then um, right around the same time, Sunday or Monday, students get dropped for non-payment. So these are things that we've had happen in the past. Just these are, it's like double jeopardy on us. So just beware. 
if faculty can get a hold of students that are in their classes, send them emails, um, you know, contact them and let them know we're here to help them. And if the faculty aren't able to be the ones to help, I think Luke might be able to have some solutions as to who can help. So really everything is kind of leading up to one place. So how do we do this? Where do we go to? Um, and then I, I will open it up when we start talking about that campus ready, that some conversations that we had recently. And I think one of them had to do with um, Jeannie Tyler had this great idea too. And I'll give you the kudos for that. Maybe you can talk about the grassroots thing. We'll talk about that shortly. Um, the ideas of how we can do things. But I just wanted to make sure people know that students will be being dropped coming soon. Can, in, when they reach out to you, please um, give them the information we're gonna give you. How do we help them? And I don't want people to feel like they just don't have anywhere to go. They don't have resources. We have plenty. We just need to make sure everybody has them in hand. That's probably the biggest update for this week. Um, and then we have other things we'll talk about with the panel. Thank you. Yeah, and if I definitely could jump in, Vice President Chavez, I, you did say that, and I did want to offer a support. Uh, the San Diego City College Virtual Welcome Center is available uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it's one of the best ways to connect with us is just to either give us a phone call or a text message. I'll go ahead and drop that inside the chat as well for everyone if you want to just reference students if they need help uh, filling out the document. And sometimes it's there's levels to it, like they don't have a PDF editor or they don't know how to do this or they don't know how to work gyro, all those different things. So we can definitely support them. We have a, a full team of outreach ambassadors and peer mentors that are available to support students. And we also have our city first step session, which takes place Monday through Friday, uh, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And they, it's a drop-in Zoom session. All they got to do is jump into the, the Zoom uh, link and they're going to be able to uh, kind of check in with us as well via via that program. So uh, real quick, awesome program. Uh, if we can, I could probably jump towards the student uh, version of this and I'll definitely go ahead and share the flyer. I'll share my screen briefly. Uh, so this is a brand new program and a huge shout out to everyone. Uh, I believe, uh, I forget the person who gave us the idea and the thought behind it, uh, but it was definitely a great program and definitely something needed. So we wanted to announce this beginning, not tomorrow, but the Friday after that, we wanted to get the word out. Uh, we, will, we will be launching the first and weekly series of our Campus Ready Student Welcome Back to Campus Q&A. And this is gonna be a time for students to connect with us, to get supported, uh, to make sure that their voice is heard, and also to really get uh, their answers and everything that they need. Big shout out to Susanna Kramer from the Financial Aid Office. Thank you so much for all this. So we will definitely have uh, a great panel of available professionals, faculty members that are going to be there, ready and willing to support our students. And one great thing that we lined it up in is right after this session takes place, uh, our city first step session will be available. So if students need to do something right after that or want to register additional units or anything, if they need help, that session will take place right after this session, and it's a great segue uh, in order for students to get connected and supported. So this is going to be going out to the DL by tomorrow. I'll be sending this out. So if you would like to come, share it with your students, share it with your, uh, the community, uh, we can definitely do that. And yeah, uh, I need with a live transcript. Perfect. Um, awesome. So thank you again, y'all. Uh, again, this, this program will be starting next week, not this week. Uh, so we're definitely excited about that. Uh, did you want to jump? Did someone want to jump? I see a hand went up. I do, if you don't mind. Um, sure. If you can leave this picture up for just a moment. Um, I just wanted to put um, thank you for creating these. And also Kim, I think, and Caesar. Um, these are posters that are also around the campus that you'll see that has other things on and wash your hands, wear a mask. Um, we did get some feedback about the poster because we didn't want people to think that we were being reckless or careless, that the students that are on the picture here are arm in arm close to each other. We did not ask them to come in and get the mask on and take a picture. This is a former picture that we cropped in the mask. So I think some people were a little confused going, why did you put a picture with so many people next to each other? It was what we had and we made use of it. I just had to put that out there, especially right now with safety being such an issue that we, that was not something we said like, hey, come in and let's get all get close together. We, we would have socially distanced if we could have it. We just took a picture and cropped the mask in. Sorry to take time to do that, but I thought that was important. Thank you, Luke. No, no, that, that's definitely a great point. Um, we should have like a 
taken in a certain day, right? Uh, but yeah, definitely, we, we're going to definitely get this flyer out to the, the campus community. So please feel free to share with your cohorts or any student that comes into contact. We can probably get some printed and get them around campus as well. Uh, we could definitely get that to our community. So yeah, thank you all so much for this. And I'm going to go ahead and stop share. And I also uh, wanted to see, you know, definitely give a huge shout out to all the different folks uh, on campus um, and really, you know, get, getting us going uh, with this uh, entire coming back to school. So I definitely wanted to take a little bit of time if anyone wanted to jump in uh, on the panel and share everything. Uh, but I, we do have one question, and I, I'm not sure if, we, if anyone on this panel would know it specifically, uh, but our one question that we had from last week to this week was, is the LRC going to be open? And if so, what are the hours? Uh, does anyone on the panel know this? We might be able to reference the... I do, a little bit. Oh, you do? Um, okay, perfect. So um, I, I, it's one that I, I have a half an answer. <laughs> so because things have really sped up with us, uh, we have a plan. We had a plan, um, the initial phase, it was two phases. And phase one was, um, we have by appointments for the beginning portion of the semester. And then I believe um, after the 20th of September, Rob Ewell is trying to figure out working what that looks like. What I can say is right now we know we're going to have limited availability to the second floor because we want to be able to track and keep an eye on where people have been or where they are and spacing for now. So I will get a formal answer response for us for next week if that's okay, but I do know that it's the answer is not no. The answer is yes, the library, the LRC will be open but it will have some limitations on it um, for right now. Now that would be mostly for students and people using the second floor. Um, we're also working on the professional development center area too. That had never formally been kicked off yet. People had moved into the spaces. Um, I think furniture had moved in and then COVID came and Nothing happened from there. So that may take a little bit more muscle and heavy lifting to get that area moving for us, but there you are. That's the answer I have today. Next week, we'll have a, a more complete answer for that, Luke. Yeah, thank you so much, Vice President Chavez. Um, can we, okay, yeah, so we um, student services actually has uh, some limited uh, student services coming up. I know uh, yesterday and today uh, our our assessment center was open. We're kind of hosting uh, different enrollment services. So kind of kind of our drop-in support services, anything along the lines of application, maybe some financial aid support, like hands-on financial aid support, socially distance, of course. Uh, so we, we are gonna be open four days next week as well for students to kind of jump in. And there's some amazing work doing uh, being done around the campus. I know uh, flyer and communication will definitely be going out uh, very, very soon. Uh, about that so we can definitely get that to you but there's lots of great in-person support I've seen it witnessed it uh, students are definitely so grateful uh, that, that they've been on campus that, that I've seen they've, they, they just been had smiles on their faces so we definitely want to acknowledge them in this moment and everyone that's you know that's continued to be here and, and really supported this time for our students so um, yeah so uh, any, any other updates that anyone else wanted to share I don't know if we want to jump in about or any other in-person services we want to address specifically um, yeah, that I, sure? yeah sorry Luke yeah thanks so um, in addition to uh, you know the outreach and community relations area which is you know for sure services promise assessment center um, and the peer lab um, being on campus to provide some in-person service um, hours I know that um, admissions and records, enrollment services is providing some in-person service hours beginning next week. Um, first, uh, financial aid has been doing in-person um, uh, appointment only um, services for students Mondays and Wednesdays. So the information um, is up on the individual um, departments um, web pages, the, the in-person service hours, but there should be something um, coming very soon that show that will show all of the in-person service hours for um, student services next uh, beginning next week. So we're working on that. But if students are, you know, saying that they need to come to campus, or if you hear that, you know, there are services that are available. Um, that you know, Luke and and the outreach um, community relations team is uh, has been out there. Um, with a with a welcome center table that's been set up. So with masks and hand sanitizers, um, fielding um, information and questions from students 
prior to having them go to the, the various areas. So, um, so we are starting. So we're starting. So um, more information will be coming out. But if uh, you know, if you have students who might need services in person, please let them know that we're that we're scaling. Um, we're here and we're scaling up. So um, I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Vice President Oscar. Right. Uh, so we definitely appreciate you uh, for being here and sharing that insight. But yeah, the welcome centers have been great. So if you have students that maybe don't have a mask or anything like that, hand sanitizer, we also have some great information out there. So if you have any students that you service, please send them to the Welcome Center tent. We're on the second level of student services. I, I've been really supporting right there just to kind of get the feel for our team when we start training our NANT staff and support staff. So it's been great. A lot of students have been very receptive and, and willing uh, to engage with us, and as well as picking up some materials and support. We're actually promoting our math camp that's coming up. We're promoting our Jumpstart uh, Your Success events coming up as well, as well as just a list of different uh, support materials to help students get started or to come back to campus. So lots of great materials at those centers. Uh, so please make sure you, you let students know that we're there to help them and ready to connect. Uh, I think the next thing uh, I want to do is I want to actually pass it over to the amazing Bree, uh, and she's going to provide us an update uh, about some toolkits. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Bree. Thank you so much, Bree, for jumping in. Yeah, thanks, Lou, for having me. Um, so, hey, City College, I just wanted to share an update um, that a, a subcommittee that's part of the Campus Ready um, task force, if you will. Um, there's a subcommittee that's working on what we're calling a campus ready toolkit. And the goal of this toolkit is to provide guidance and tools, actual tangible tools, um, to support city college employees as they navigate the return to in-person classes and services while maintaining district policy as it relates to health and safety. So um, we're really excited to be able to provide some, some helpful tools to support both instructional employees and student services employees um, that uh, on how to address situations that might come up around, you know, the mask mandates and um, we're developing some scripts and how folks might respond, um, you know, to certain situations if a student comes into the classroom or comes into a student services area. Um, and we wanted to, and we've been really focused on the tone um, of the messaging that's, that's part of the toolkit and making sure that we're, you know, using a tone of care and concern, but also, you know, consistency and safe, um, being sensitive and validating, um, and, and of course, welcoming. Um, so that is in the works right now where we have a group of folks kind of across um, all the campus uh, um, classifications, instruction, mental health, student services, classified professionals, and, and we want to, to develop a toolkit that will be really useful to you all as we return back. Um, if you are interested in participating with us or would like to kind of be kind of be the pilot of the, of the toolkit and reviewing it, please do send me an email. We'd love to have you join us um, in this effort, and we hope that this will be really, really helpful and also help you feel a little bit more equipped and comfortable as you're coming back and knowing how to navigate situations. We will be um, going over the toolkit in during Flex Week. Um, so look out for that. It's going to be Campus Ready Toolkit will be kind of the, the name of it. And um, we're also going to do um, something specifically for our student services side as well. Um, so that's my update for now. <laughs> Big shout out to, to you, Bri, and that team um, for coming forward to working on it. Um, it's fantastic information, and uh, the district is actually looking to glean off of your toolkit and things to ha help the rest of the district out. But thank you very much on that, and great work. I'm excited to be part of that and see it. Yeah, thank you so much, Bree. Again, some awesome things that that um, that, that are going to be available to our campus community. Uh, I think that's going to be amazing. Uh, next, we have an update uh, from Dean Tyler. She's going to share with us some content. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our amazing Dean Tyler, and uh, we'll pass it over to her next. So uh, not so much an update, but more of a pitching an idea. And I'm, I apologize for doing it in this forum, but we have all the people here that might be able to help assist and form and help us pull it off. Um, at the beginning of our informational system, uh, session, VPI Chavez mentioned the pending drop date. And um, I've been hearing and listening and reaching out some of the strategies our sister colleges are using to 
reach out and engage the students and provide the communication. I recognize when they register, they get an, a reminder that it's needed to do. I believe they've gotten another email, but, um, and I'm so thankful to hear that there are some in-person services coming back to campus because I've been on campus and anytime I have to go out and travel to another building, I run into somebody that they're like, I'm just looking for somebody to talk to or I need help. And then I provide them what information I can or, or point them to the, the table. But um, one thought I had, um, VPI Chavez was absolutely correct. If any of the faculty are out there listening, um, me as a dean, I'll get the word out also and have, but um, engage the students on your rosters directly. Provide that reminder. Hey, I'm really looking forward to seeing you on campus in the fall. Make sure that you've done X, Y, and Z. But one thing I brought up in uh, the dean's meeting yesterday, so Leslie's heard it, Dee's heard it. Um, Luke, this would be new to you. And I want to start out by saying I offer my services, but can we just get some tables and laptops out there and say, come to campus and submit your form, submit your verification or talk to us and submit your um, exemption requests if needed. Um, total grassroots effort, um, come, come say hello, come if it's during the hours when in-person services are available, come get your questions answered, but we're here for you and we wanna help you. Um, Cause sometimes submitting those forms online can be a little clunky, can be a little, um, hey, why exactly is this needed? How do I do it? That kind of stuff. So maybe we could just kind of band together sometime next week and be out there and say, come one, everybody register in on-campus class. We're here for you and we'll help you. That was, that was just the, the thought, the idea. Jeannie, thank you. I think that's a great idea. Let's make every effort to try to help the students um, get back, get back to campus, right? Um, and there's some that uh, maybe just they don't realize it. They've enrolled for a class. I know sometimes um, people enroll in a class and they're not realizing that they signed up for a face-to-face -face and something's, they're, they're not completed until they get dropped, right? And then it's like, what, I didn't even know. I didn't realize that because people have their lives to deal with as well. And that does happen. So anything, any efforts that we can make to try to get in touch with those students, um, I, I think that's fantastic. It would be remarkable to do. And I think it'd be kind of fun to be able to have people back around us as well. Um, so that, that's one thing. The other thought was, I, my mind was still going back to Bree with the toolkit. And um, I know it's not your responsibility, but I'm just gonna throw it out there. Since we're talking about faculty and the hybrid classes and face-to-face, -face, those are classes that would require some type of PPE in the classroom. Right now, the PPE would be face mask. Um, of some sort. So we have a lot of that. And I'm just going to put a shout out there to the deans, the chairs, the faculty, um, anyone that can help that uh, every classroom that we're going to be on campus, we should have a box of masks in, in the classroom, like right when they walk in the door, so that there's no reason for someone to have to walk and look for a welcome station or something else, right? You want to maintain them because, you know, as soon as they leave that door, they may not come back again. So we want to make sure that we have all the needs already there. And, and Bree, that's not your responsibility, but I know it's part of your toolkit. Just know that that's something that we can say and um, I know John Parker, um, his office, Dina Prater, have been working on a open house that's coming up of picking up uh, the PPE that might be needed. So if you're not sure, um, perhaps deans and chairs contact the people that are having the classes on the campus to make sure either they're coming to get it or that somehow you make that arrangement. I just thought that might be something I put out there at the same time, since it is communication right now. And thank you. Thank you so much, Vice President Chavez. We definitely appreciate that. Um, and we got a question that came into the chat. So thank you so much. Uh, quick question. Is there any update on food trucks availability? Any update on food trucks? I know Dr. Parker is not here, but do, do we know? So he's not here, but, <laughs> but for some reason, I don't know how I get myself in these places. So um, I happen to know that they're going to be providing some um, updates for us on Tuesday about food services. I know that the cafe and the MS building is one of the places that they were targeting first, but I haven't heard about the food truck. And since I have a call out to somebody from the district on other stuff about food catering, I'm going to toss that question into that same area 
and I will ask that question about food trucks. Um, I do know that this week food services were um, coming to all the campuses to start to check out the cafeterias, see what's working, what needs to be repaired. After a year and a half not functioning, what what no need to be cleaned or, or sent to, I don't know what they do for that sanitization or whatever it might be. So I do know there's some work, but I will find out about food trucks. Good question. Yeah, definitely and then shout probably, out. I'm sorry, the, the, I would imagine the food trucks would be in the areas where we are mostly on campus, right? The location. Yes, definitely. Food trucks are always welcome. Uh, so just a quick update, y'all. If you do have questions, thank you so much for our question there. If you do have questions, feel free to post them in the chat. We would love to, to hear you and to, to get something answered that you need, but that's a great, great question. Um, and we would love to do that. Um, I also wanted to bring back in, pass it back over to Bree. She had a quick, another update for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back over to Bree and she's gonna provide one more update for us. Thanks so much, Luke. You're so good at emceeing. I, I love it. Um, I forgot to mention, I got so excited about the toolkit. I forgot to mention certain elements of, of the toolkit and other um, kind of collaborative um, partnerships that are going on to support you as we welcome students back. Um, so one of the things that will be a part of the toolkit, um, and thank you, uh, Vice President Chavez for mentioning the, the masks and, and making sure that folks have those, um, if they're on campus in their so it's student service areas and in the classrooms, that will be part of it. But also um, we're working on, in collaboration with the department chairs, working on syllabus language for um, including um, syllabus language on, on the regarding the mask mandates. So that will be also one of the tools in the toolkit. And we'll be sending that out sooner. So you, because I know a lot of you um, instructional folks are getting your syllabuses ready now. And in addition to um, information and language to include on your um, syllabus regarding the basic needs and, and making sure that student recognizing that students' basic needs being met is critical to their support in the classroom and outside. And so we'll have information on how students can access that and our, our student health, mental health and um, DSPS services. So that will be being sent out soon as well. Um, another thing that I did wanna mention is in addition to our flex, it's gonna be focusing really on the toolkit and going over the toolkit and how you can use it in the classroom. There's gonna be um, kind of an accompanying flex um, that's gonna be titled re-entry anxiety and transitioning to the new normal. And that's gonna be focused on how you can support students as they come back and, and, and how you can, and to support you in navigating some of the behavioral and psychological aspects that you might be seeing as, their, as students are transitioning. So kind of a two-part two series, the tangible toolkit um, for health and safety, and then also um, the, the, the piece on supporting you as we're, we're addressing kind of um, the, the, the psychological um, transition as well. So thanks to our friends over in mental health for um, collaborating on that. And then also I did wanna mention one last thing that um, there are daily live Q and A um, Zoom sessions um, that are happening right now. Um, they're entitled Student Ready Mind and Body First. Um, and it's a collaboration between student health, mental health, disability support programs and services. And we're really just holding space um, to support you as you process questions and or concerns um, related to transitioning to campus. So this is really, um, it's really for anyone, but um, it's open to students. And we wanna just make sure that students know that we're holding space for them uh, as well. So I think those are, I think that's everything. Let me just make sure. So, okay, I'm gonna, um, Oh, it looks like there's a question about the 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 kits. Oh, I think Tilly, you answered that. Um, that Parker was that um, VP Parker was um, putting the the kits together and going to coordinate like a open house day where folks can come pick up um, the actual. So I actually have the dates now in front oh, okay. of me. <laughs> I'm looking to see if there's a time. I don't. So um, it looks like we're going to start with August 3rd and 4th. Looks like that's next Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, that looks like they're issuing the PPE kits by department, not individuals necessarily. Um, at the same time, we're we're collaborating with um, John's office to also try to get catalogs out to people at the same time. So if you come in for your department and you come in to pick up um, your kits. Then if, if you're requiring a certain amount of catalogs that your faculty need to use or your area needs, pick them up at the same time. Um, otherwise, my office will be putting those into the mailboxes at some point in time as well. But I just wanted to put that, I was looking if there was a time yet. 
I think it was for some reason, if I'm, Angela had mentioned something like, I want to say like nine to three or something like that, but is that what it is, Genevieve, do you know? Yeah, I was just looking and it, it looked like it's, um, I think it's 8.30 to three. Okay. Which would be over in the um, T building, is that correct? I thought it was the T building by business services in the hallway. That was the intention. Because the pallets of PPE are there. We don't want to have to move them very far. But that won't be the only opportunity people get to pick up PPE. All right. Well, thank you everyone for the updates. Uh, I did want to offer one thing as well. If, if you also need some signage and posters for the, the campus ready, uh, we do have a fair amount left inside of our outreach office. So if you want to pick any up, uh, anything like that, please connect with me and I would be happy to provide some to you, your office area, I can drop it off. I believe we also have a little bit of putty left too. So if you'd like to use that to put it up on windows or anything like that, uh, we can definitely make that happen. Um, so please let me know. We'd have some signage left as well as some new signage for some new events coming up in the very new future to welcome our brand new students. And if, I hope it's okay if I can share this real quick. Uh, but we have our summer math and success jam. And this is going to be for brand new students coming to city August 9th through the 11th. Please, please, please tell them to RSVP. This is going to be a powerful time uh, with our faculty members here at San Diego City College. The planning has been going amazing. So please, if you have any new students that would like to kind of be welcome to the family, experience some amazing things, uh, the math jam will definitely be amazing. After that, we do also have our city jumpstart your success. Huge shout out to our general counseling office, Georgina Garcia, as well as all of our uh, enrollment services offices, um, outreach, Megan's office, financial aid, the list goes on. It's going to be a powerful day. I will be sending out a DL if anyone would like to host a breakout room for this as well. This is going to be a great way to welcome our students to campus and a huge shout out to again all our counselors for hosting the belonging session one more time. Uh, hopefully it continues. I know it's been powerful in the past and we have heard great feedback from students. So I definitely wanted to promote that. If you would like these flyers or the math camp flyers as well, please let me know. We just got a big stack. So thank you to Patty and her team for getting those two us we definitely appreciate it um i'll throw it back to the panel and and you know if anyone i will offer it one more time if anyone would like to jump in i am checking the chat so if you do have a question please go ahead and drop it in there we would love to to hear from you uh great questions thus far amazing uh but again it, it maybe if you would like to process think uh submit at a later time please check the email we do have our google form in there that you're more than welcome to submit questions anytime you would like so we would definitely uh love to hear from y'all uh, knowing that, panelists, anyone else would like to jump in, share anything? Yeah, actually, I just thought of something. You made me, you sparked my memory as you were talking about signage and all the, the awesome posters that, that Outreach has. Um, one of the other things that will be part of the toolkit that actually Kim helped us uh, with is we have some template um, student ready kind of flyers that folks can use to um, incorporate your kind of your own language or revise your own language um, or if you want to post like your office hours or um, kind of using this consistent branding that we're using with student ready um, so those will also be available and our student services areas will will have access to them as well um, to post um, information um, in, in their areas so that was great about that <laughs> are, are those electronic can you send them yes, I'm gonna send them Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Do we flood your inbox or ask someone else? No, actually, they're going to be part. So the toolkit is going to be electronic as well. So we'll be sending it out. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a great idea. Thank you for thinking of that. Luke, I had a, a question. Uh, thank you for sharing. So happy to see the math gem is having and students will be able to engage that way. The second flyer you showed about um, get help and you mentioned help with registration. Those dates are after the drop deadline for on campus classes if you're dropped if you haven't submitted your vaccination paperwork so if there's room in those on campus classes and students get registered that day. What, what's the process for them will they be dropped again if they don't submit their paperwork. And we're re referencing the on campus courses yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. 
So the the come to campus get help or I don't were those in campus in person? And wait, it lists it lists uh, financial aid, admissions, quick yeah, so and the last thing is it mentions help with registration. Yeah, so the, the the jumpstart event is kind of like a welcome event. We will have like you know enrollment services available for students that day, but we do like like we were saying a little bit earlier, we we do have our lab that's open Monday through Thursday, so students can come a, any single day they want. On Mondays, we're open from uh, twelve p.m. to to four p.m. Tuesdays, uh, nine a.m. to one p.m. Wednesdays. Uh, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. and then again Thursdays 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and we're we're available to support them with all that paperwork. Uh, again, we're we're here today right now, uh, and we'll be open next week for that. So we can definitely support those students in person uh, well before that 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 drop day. So we'll we'll definitely be here back on Monday morning or Monday afternoon, and we would definitely be happy to support for those students that need that support. But this event is kind of like a great welcome. Uh, but if for students that do want to come and get that enrollment support, they'll definitely be that there as well. And, and they'll be able to register in on-campus classes. Yeah, we'll have people there to help them register, yeah. Right. I like that Jeannie, she's always trying to get that enrollment. <laughs> yeah, so uh, panelists, anything else? Any, any other comments, any other questions, y'all? Uh, please feel free to, to drop them in the chat. We would love to support y'all. Uh, but anything else from the panelists? You know, I, I'm not sure if I wanna bring this up, I guess I need to because I just opened my mouth and said something, but um, I really just want to go back on a couple of things that we've mentioned today. And that is um, like the, the subgroup um, Breeze team that's been working on this toolkits and they're working on toolkits for a reason, right? I'm going back to where you talk about the wonderful things you're doing and stuff, but it's their guides to help people, faculty, um, when they come back to campus with students that are face-to-face, -face. we haven't done this. Um, some people have been doing this for over a year already, right? D, right? Your nursing program's been face-to-face. Um, -face. We have our electrical program, HVAC, some things that have been face-to-face. -face. So for them, they just continue to move forward. But for some faculty that haven't been in a classroom face-to-face -face, um, with anyone for a year and a half, you know, it's like you trying to remember what is it that I'm, I'm trying to be responsible just for myself. Now I have to worry about my classroom as well. And I think that's the things that um, Bree and the team are really working on is, um, you know, it's a new environment coming back when we left, people didn't wear masks. Now, now wearing masks isn't necessarily needed out in the real world, but we live in the city college world here and we do wear masks here at work. Maybe I'm not wearing it in my office because I'm only here by myself, right? But when I'm gonna go into a classroom, those are gonna be the needs. And I, I just kind of wanted to bring that forward as to why their subgroup is really working hard to try to have those tools available and, and that requirement of the mask in the classroom. And then the other piece I wanted to mention, and I, I think I had mentioned it at College Council, and forgive me, I don't remember if I mentioned it here. Um, we're also trying to be very much um, safety oriented and aware of what's happening again in the world. And as things maybe change with the different variants that are out there, um, that, that maybe we need to shift or pivot at some times. We've all been doing that for a year and a half and if by any means that something happens that we've been asked to um, take a face-to-face -face or a hybrid class and flip it for a week or two or whatever it might be, I just want people to be the, ready for that. I don't want them to come back and say, nobody told me this could be a possibility. I just, I just kind of want to bring that up. I don't know if that brings a lot of questions into the chat, Luke, or not, but I just... I just really think it's important to me. It's obvious because I'm in this and I talk about this every day, but I just want to make sure people that are listening out there have that in the back of their mind as well. Does that make sense? I just really want to bring that forward. Yeah, thank you so much, Vice President Charles, for that, uh, that uh, comment and, and thought. Def definitely appreciate it. Okay, folks, uh, we are ending almost uh, our time for today, and we definitely want to make sure that you have your voice heard. If you do have any questions, comments, thoughts, please feel free to drop them in the chat. And like I said before, if, if maybe you don't, that's not your thing, you want to drop the chat, feel free to submit via the Google form. It is on the DL we sent today. So if you do want to submit it there, we would definitely love to hear from you. Uh, I forgot right back to Vice President Chavez. Yes. I forgot one. Parking. People have been asking about parking. So... 
um, right when uh, uh, John Parker went on vacation, I confirmed with him of what our parking is going to be available because I know people want to know this. So right now it's confirmed that we will be open every, all parking lots will be open with the exception of the AH garage. So everything should be available and opening um, except for the AH garage until due, later notice when they tell us about that one. Other than that, um, I know people have been wondering where can I park? And I, I think they're being pretty lenient right now in the fall semester about parking for students. Um, Luke, when you talk with campus, you know, student campus ready, just as long as they're not parking in faculty places and handicap, I think they're gonna be okay. <laughs> you know, as long as it doesn't say staff, <laughs> they'll be okay. Yeah, no, parking is definitely great. We definitely been sharing it and we can definitely do something and post it on social media. I think that'll be a great update for folks to know if they are planning to come to campus. So I think that's a great, great insight. All right, y'all. Well, it doesn't seem like we're getting any more questions. So knowing that, uh, unless there's any more comments, updates, insights from our panel, we'll open it up for a couple moments. I think we're good. So knowing that, we want to thank you all for being here. Have an amazing, amazing rest of your Thursday afternoon. Please take care. Uh, we definitely appreciate you all for spending some time with us. We will also be posting this on YouTube. If you would like the updates or share it with any of your staff or team members that maybe weren't able to be here today. But we want to thank you all. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.